It's a big storm today. Definitely 100 amp hours. Less than 250 bucks Canadian per kilowatt hour. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a busted piling. <laughs> what a ride. So I'm gonna go check my credit card balance and see if I could go buy another one right now. All right, check this out. We got the mother load, baby. Hey, do you remember not too long ago where I got those two batteries and one of them kept failing? No. Oh. I built my own battery pack and uh, that battery pack, if you were to go buy those two batteries separately, costs twice as much as what this battery is ready from the factory. Way less work. Let's get into it. Let's make sure that it's up to the task. Definitely 100 amp hours. 51.2 volts times 100 amps, five kilowatt hours. It's the most industrial unboxing I've done in a while. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Fingers. <sighs> this is what they call in the industry a server rack battery. Server rack batteries are a really great bang for your buck. This is an $800 battery, five kilowatt hours for 800 bucks. Form factor is obviously designed to be set up in a rack, which means usually you'd buy more than one of these. Five kilowatt hours is like 10 lead acid batteries. Um, if you are like me and want to run something like an electric motor to power move your boat, then this starts making more sense. Hey Lee, you're like a, a specialist. Yeah, I'm, I'm filming right now, so. But uh, you're the perfect guy to walk in. Look at the battery, the shipment I just received. Air lithiums, 51.2, 100 amp hours. <laughs> Dang, server wreck battery. Unauthorized removal of this label will not allow for repair. Stick her here. Do it. I love that. All right, well, so I have a YouTube channel. I didn't pay for this battery. Let's rip into it. So. For those of you who don't know, Lee, Lee's are like our electronics uh, specialist here on the island, basically. I'm pretty sure you're one of the only people on this island who can fix a circuit board problem. Oh, yeah. Well, it fixes a strong a one. We don't always, yeah, yeah, we don't always yeah. make it. <laughs> All right, Ready. here we go. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Oh, uh. This is definitely not waterproof. I'm not seeing any sign of silicone anywhere in here. Oh, no. um, but very workable. A nice BMS loom. We got some solid quality bus bars. These are tinned, tinned copper all the way around. Uh, and then we have a control board up at the top with BMS. So these have different style connectors than you're used to seeing. They're not just studs. When you go to buy the batteries on the website, you'll see these A01, A02, A03 type of connectors that they sell, proprietary, I guess. This is not waterproof at all. Yeah. At all, at all, at all. Exactly. These look almost identical to the cells I was pulling out of the other battery. Wow, well, as you can imagine, my little five amp variable voltage charger uh, definitely took a while to charge up 100 amp hours, five kilowatt hours worth of storage here. So uh, we got it all topped up at 100%. These are server rack batteries. Um, so that means we should probably put a server rack into my boat. Uh, I brought the battery bank out to Old Dog. Old Dog's a mess right now because I'm focusing my energy on Perry. Um, but uh, we're just going to get this thing installed in here alongside and parallel with my other bank. They're the same chemistry, same cell orientation, same voltage, same everything. I'm just wanting to see how they kind of compare to each other. Now, the mine only has like one volt temperature sensor, I think maybe two, uh, and it has, doesn't even have self-balancing, which is really annoying. It has no control screen, no communications, no nothing. So. It really is a dumb box to put alongside this nice smart box. It's not gonna like hurt it because they have their own BMS modules, but they won't draw exactly the same. So it's not ideal. You don't necessarily want to do this. You'll know, usually it's much better to just buy a bunch of batteries the same at the same time. And at the price that these are at, 
you know, you can kind of afford to buy your system all at once for most folks. Well, not most folks, for some folks, for folks who can do. Um, for the folks like me who rely on sponsors for batteries, here we are. Let's go put it through his paces and try and break it. <laughs> uh, I did notice that though, that the cabling, although uh, quite nice and has nice tinned terminals, the terminals are too small for the posts I'm about to put them on, so I have to switch that out. In switching, cut the terminals off and discovered that it's untinned wire underneath. So it's, it would be nice if it was tinned, but it's also like the whole case isn't waterproof. So is it the best marine battery ever? No, but it is what it is. Okay, I've had that battery plugged in. Uh, now I'm cooking all my meals on that electric power. And uh, it's, it's giving me kind of a better idea of just the massive capacity of having 10 kilowatt hours of battery there. Uh, it balanced well to my uh, battery. The, uh, the really nice thing about it is with that power button on it, you can dispower the battery and then connect everything and then just press the button. And there's never like a moment of, you know, if you're 0.2 volts off or whatever, which should be within that range. There's not any for a spark or a surge or some sort of load or draw, uh, nothing like that. So the, the button I really like, and then also the display screen. I, I love the display screen. I, it's kind of my de facto uh, shunt now because I don't really have a shunt anywhere else in the boat. I don't really need one now because I can just go in there and be like, oh, well, there's seven amps coming out of this battery. I can assume there's seven amps coming out of the other one. And it's at like 23%. So I can assume the whole bank is at 23% because they're in parallel, right? It's amazing. But what I mean to say is uh, the amount of capacity is wild. Like uh, the battery was at 25% yesterday and there was like no sun coming in, no solar at all. Pretty much it was very, very dark, very stormy yesterday. Uh, I cooked lunch and then dinner, did not run the dishwasher. Uh, and I'm now sitting at just about 19%. So that's kind of crazy to be able to cook like the two biggest meals. Oh yeah, and then I made coffee and breakfast this morning. So three meals, and I only burned 6% of that battery bank, which is kind of amazing. Of course, as it turns out, I'm out of power in my workshop. Why not? All right, well, yeah, it's funny. I never really check if the power's gone out before I come to shore. It happens a lot on this island. Um, yeah. If I was running my shop on these batteries, I wouldn't have to worry about it. But unfortunately, I am not. Cup of coffee. We're at uh, just about 40% or 30% on the battery bank. Um, I have learned through a week or so or more of using, more than a week now, of using this battery that uh, it, for me, I can cook with the induction cooktop um, and the kettle and the Instapot, use my fridge, run the lights, charge my phone, charge my Steam Deck, play some video games, run the heated blanket at night, and I burn two and a half kilowatt hours a day worth of juice. So it's been raining a lot recently, so I haven't been charging as much. So it is slowly working the battery bank down, but it's just wild. Now that I have 10 kilowatt hours, like how long it takes me to deplete this battery. Also, it's lovely because before it would be like, oh, it's 11 o'clock in the morning in the summertime or 10 o'clock in the morning and my, my batteries are all full. Like I just don't have the capacity to store anything more. Uh, not in the case anymore. Now I got capacity and at $800, that's just wild. So they got a sale going on right now. Uh, for Canadians, it's uh, $999 uh, Canadian for that thing, which for Americans, I think is like less than 800. It's going to be like six something i don't know it's crazy that's like so cheap um i'm probably gonna go and order another one because <laughs> as much as it's nice to have four days worth of battery i'd like to have six days worth of battery <laughs> like a whole week pretty much that'd be so lovely it's a big storm today this would be the first big one of the season so uh Let's get out and go deal with it. The marina's already lost three pilings in the previous storms already this season. And it's not looking good because they got a survey done a little while ago that said six other pilings were toast and about to go. And of the three that we've lost, none of them were part of those six. Hello. 
It's gonna be exciting. Anyway, my boats are locked down and uh, maybe I can show you guys how to lock down your boat for a big global storm. So the storm's already started. It's a big cyclone out there in the uh, Pacific. Uh, the internet's going a little crazy and it always does on the first storm of the season. So I'm thinking it's just gonna be a normal winter storm, unpleasant, but you know, not anything crazy. And if this was like the Caribbean, we wouldn't even be looking at it because it's 40 knots. I mean, who cares about 40 knots? It's nothing. But around here, that's kind of a standard winter storm. And uh, yeah, it can be, um, well, it's just what you're used to, right? So uh, let's go over how to get your boat ready and what kind of decisions and planning that you might do just to make this experience a lot easier. All right, first things first, if you're out on a Gulf Island, there's a good chance you're gonna lose power. So uh, make sure you load up on water, make sure you load up on the other stuff. You know you're gonna lose power probably, so plan for that. Secondly, where do you put your boat? Placement, placement, placement. You check out my spot. We have worked really hard to get ourselves as close to the southeast corner of our bay where we're totally sheltered by this island. This is called Seer Island. So if you look over there, Perihelion's right there, Old Dog's right here. We're pretty much almost as close as you can get to Seer Island, which means we're getting, those guys are getting blown around pretty good back there, and I'm barely feeling a breeze in here, right? Let, next thing, last thing for the boat, honestly. Uh, you want a mooring block, <laughs> a good one. Serious mooring block is really nice to have. Uh, and in key to that mooring block, you want a bridle and you want to fix the bridle so it's not sliding back and forth because that'll rub right through in one storm. And then you want a backup line in a different color and loose so that from shore, you can look at your boat and say, hey, is that other colored line, is it still loose? If it is, you're good. If it's not, you've snapped one of your bridle lines and you better get out to your boat and fix it before you snap another one and then another one and your boat's gone. But uh, you know, redundancies and ease of maintenance. That's the key because it's about to get a lot rockier in here and I don't wanna be fucking around with all the wind and all the rain and slipping around on deck and trying to wrestle ropes and fighting a 16 ton boat or 16,000 pound boat, 16,000 pound boat. I don't wanna be doing that. So try to make it as easy as I can for myself. We've lost one piling so far, it's about 6.30 now. The storm's gonna rage for another six hours. But unfortunately the two boats strapped to it are so big, I don't think there's anything I can do. Which sucks. Uh, I might climb aboard and just move some fenders around and when and if that dock lets go completely, then uh, there'll be some Need something to absorb some damage. It's a bit bigger of a blow than I was anticipating. I thought it's got all worked up about the first blow of the season. That's it's dusting for sure. It's in the 40 knot range. It's hitting pretty good. Of course the power's out too. About 30 minutes ago, maybe 45. That's how we know the farm's really here. <laughs> trying to land in Vancouver. Good luck, my dude. Holy. Yeah, here's our victims. Solstice and Alioth. Alioth's on the inside. And this will probably push her in that way. Here she is. 
she is. Here's our broken piling. Yeah, that's a busted piling. That's not looking good. Here's the morale yacht. Let's go get some fenders on her. Spots. Talk to her. Oh my god, look how close it is. Woo! As the dock bends, we'll comply with that. Unfortunately, that dock arm also has an old wood piling. That might fail. But at least here, when this one comes and collides with that one, we'll be on a fender. I doubt it'll let go at the bow. Maybe I can find another quick fender and tuck it up here. <laughs> it's like. It's like being a cowboy. I want a fucking bull over here. <laughs> Disgusting. I'm gonna go find a rope and hook this up. Whoa. He's lost his dinghy. This <laughs> fuel dog jostled himself off. I'm gonna get him thrown right off there. I bet you do. Alright, let's go. Ah, home sweet home. <laughs> what a ride! It's pretty drama free on my boat, which is nice. A little bit of banging around. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, we're close to that island, so we're really sheltered. Uh, but every once in a while, a spiral of wind comes around, we get this massive gust. It catches me on the beam, unfortunately, sometimes, which, uh, yeah, blows the stuff. So I cleared the back deck, uh, just tidied everything up there. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's probably got another two or three hours of hardcore blowing, and then it's going to taper off. So put on a movie or something. It is super nice having uh, all my lights on and the heat going and a nice and toasty warm. Boat's rocking pretty good, but otherwise... I'm pretty comfortable. It's nice. Hopefully the marina is still in one piece when I get back there tomorrow. Hopefully. Good morning. Got my hot cup of coffee. Ooh, pretty good. Got about six hours of sleep last night, which is actually pretty impressive considering the conditions. Um, I've gotten a lot better at this. <laughs> I've been at this for a while. Hopefully it serves me well when I go out and sail around the world and stuff, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not seeing any indications of massive damage from here, but we'll go hop in the dinghy and have a look around and tally that butcher's bill. Well, turns out I was a little wrong about this storm. It turned out to be the second biggest storm I've lived through on the west coast, hitting gusts of 60 knots and tearing this little sailboat off its mooring and onto the beach. It took a team effort to get it off, there it is. All right, success. We got a bunch of damage over at the dock for me to deal with now, so. Ooh wee, let's go. Marina took a pretty good beating. Two of our largest covered trawlers broke loose. This one tore through its bull rail and managed to slam into the beautiful wooden boat next to it, causing a lot of damage. Luckily, my fender job saved the day with Alioth, and even though we lost a mooring piling, we didn't have any more collisions over here. Well, Alioth skipped any damage, which is lovely. 
Turns out my fender job last night really saved us from impact with the next neighbor. It's, uh, considering we hit 60 knots, it's not a bad uh, butcher's bill. Not bad. Oh, sick. <laughs> sick fender. Nice. Oh, thank God you're here. Your boat smashed to pieces. It's the end. The mirror? What mirror? The mirror, the tender. It flipped and oh. smashed on the ground. Thank God my car wasn't there. No. Yeah, I just, I just came to get cigarettes and check on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, don't. She's living the lap of luxury. Oh, she's I a land lover now. Land lover now. Oh, oh, it's oh, it's for your trip. Oh, yeah. Power guys are already on the island. That's fantastic. Right on. Well, because we broke that piling, we just moved those two boats actually from another broken piling onto that spot. And now uh, Barry, I just went to go pick up Barry and we're gonna go and, and just move them again. And we're out of places to move them in Silver Bay, so now we gotta move them over to another marina. So. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Nature. I've towed a lot of boats this winter so far. Yeah, it's been productive. I'm glad that we got that dinghy going because it's like, we use it a lot. Yeah, it's essential. Yeah. All right, well, let's get to towing. All right, so that piling that broke during the storm is the one we got to clear, which means we're moving Alioth and Solstice, two quite large monohull boats. And this time we're dragging them over to Pages next door. Don't film my landings usually, and that one wasn't the best anyways. But I can tell YouTube it was okay. It was a good landing, very good. Um, and now we're gonna move Alioth. Luckily, we can fire this one up and she can move under her own power, which is fantastic. And Barry's captaining her. And I will be the stern thruster, and we're just gonna figure out how that bow thruster works. And we've got a really easy slip to go into, so this should be no drama at all. Voilà le propulseur. Glizzies? That's what we're gonna have for dinner. Uh, this is what I'm. So this is what I'm talking about. A lot of people like want to live aboard on boats and are upset when like the marina doesn't want to help them out. It's like they don't want to help you out because you haven't done this kind of thing. They don't know that they need this kind of thing. They need us. Yeah. They don't know it yet. They just want to push you out in summertime or whatever. And then when shit gets wild, they're like. Can you come back and help yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like, so you gotta like establish that. Maybe you give a few pro bono quick jobs in this winter time and you're helping people out. And then and once you're in, you're in. So I've had to like, I've done this for years now here. Yeah. Messing about. And, and then we just laundered my, my, <laughs> my reputation on Barry so that he can get yeah. in here. And now I rope him in. Now we got two guys to move boats yeah. around. It so works. Just well, we're actually a good the boat landing team. We are all right. Yeah, we both know when someone's on the boat. It's almost like we've owned a game. boat together. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, it finally happened. We're out of power. Of course, we're not actually out of power because I have a 12 volt backup system that always is ready to go. So when the 48 volt pack dies, my 12 volt system still work, which include lights, which is I think necessary for everyone running a 48 volt pack. Just you gotta set that up that way. It's so much better. Um, the battery has been uh, abused a lot recently. Um, we've had a crazy storm and I've had a little tiny amount of solar coming in and I've been using that pack to charge little portable packs and then hooking my friends up. So all the people around that needed to uh, charge their cell phones or uh, maybe run some stuff like freezers uh, while the power is out and they don't have generators at their place. So that's where most of that energy is gone. Because honestly, if it was just me and myself, like that battery would have lasted me the whole this whole storm and I'd have no problems. But, you know, it is what it is. 
Uh, it's the morning now and hopefully this rain will clear and we'll get some sunshine. We'll get that thing charged back up. But in the meantime, I gotta go pick up uh, a mounting point for that. Cause right now it's just sitting on the floor <laughs> underneath my couch. We gotta go fix that. Let's set it up with some proper server racks. We're heading off to Nanaimo to go pick up a used server rack. Um, I was looking at the online prices for new ones and it's just like, yeah, they're pretty expensive, but it's kind of one of those specialized pieces of equipment that figure uh, wait around on Marketplace, I'll find something and sure enough, got a music uh, sound booth type of server rack showed up on Marketplace and we're gonna set it up inside of Perihelia. This will let us mount our batteries, but also our solar charge controllers and other equipment, all in a nice clean rack system and then have the whole thing ventilated. And uh, I think like last time I built my own, um, you know, a bunch of custom hardware and this just makes it a lot easier. And then I can get like sliding drawers or any other stuff I wanna do that's just like prefab ready made and could just slot right in. So that's what I'm thinking. Should make it a little bit easier. Let's go pick it up. Okay, here's our server rack. This one's actually designed for amplifiers and music equipment, but uh, similar idea. I got it uh, secondhand and quite affordable. So uh, I wanted to get, like, to get one this size with the nice door that I wanted was gonna be like $1,000. Uh, so instead I spent 150 bucks to get a used one. Um, we're just gonna make this work. But my idea is that server rack batteries down here and then all the charge controllers and the entire electrical cabinet that I had to build custom for old dog. Well, now it's just gonna fit in here. And so are all the kinds of uh, shelving and other stuff. Like I could just go order that on Amazon or, or pick it some more up used. And uh, it'll just work because it's a standard size, which is really nice. And that'll give me the chance to route all the cables. Every one of these panels comes off and I got to figure out why every time I jiggle, this at all, one of the panels comes off. Like I've locked them on. They're not supposed to do that. I don't know. There's probably some stuff loose. So I'm gonna go over this thing, clean it up, strip it down and see if we can get one of the batteries in there. I've got it bolted in really stiff, but if you'll remember, this battery is very heavy. <laughs> Uh, it has a capacity of eight lead acid batteries. So let's see what happens when I do this. It has no supports in the back at all. It didn't come with any. Oh, what do you know? What's great is, uh, yeah, so I can mount, can mount the door in either direction, it has quick disconnects. So if I ever need to get anything big in and out of there, boom, locked up. It's got a key for it if I ever need to lock it and then open it up. And I've got enough room to put four of these big server rack batteries in there. Now I'm gonna get another set of DIN rails, or not DIN rails, but server rack rails for the back and then just add supports at each stage because I really don't think I'm supposed to mount them like this. The metal is certainly twisting just slightly. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a lot of weight to be just balanced off the front face like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this down in a second, but uh, I just wanna wrap up this episode because I think this is super sick. $1,000 per 5.125 kilowatt hours. Less than 250 bucks Canadian per kilowatt hour. You couldn't even get cells at that price, uh, like what, two years ago or a year ago? That's crazy. And these are good quality cells, the six temp sensors. You've got really nice, uh, the, the cabling, those cables are super posh to work with. They just clip and twist, really, really lovely. You got communication and this uh, battery bank, like the ability to turn on and off, seriously underrated. Cause that lets me like, power down chunks of my system or my whole system whenever I want, right? And then the fact that I can go and check the single, every single cell voltage, everything through just this control screen is amazing. Um, it's not a super high quality screen or anything. Like I'm not gonna go port doom onto this thing, but I'm still like very impressed. And then of course it communicates with 
20 different types of uh, inverters and communication buses so it does work my Renogy one so we'll be able to wire that in and they'll be able to get sensors out of that um i am just just tickled pink this is amazing so i'm gonna go check my credit card balance and see if i could go buy another one right now if you want to buy one please check the link in the description they're having a black friday sale and they're going real cheap right now those prices aren't going to stick around forever um, so please do by all means check it out um, for a lot of folks you know this is going to be what makes it possible for them to live off grid uh, affordably this is this is huge and then server rack eh? isn't that great my whole electrical system will just be in this and then i can just tuck it away close it and then i'll have to look at it and then i can have a control panel somewhere else in the boat and i'll have all my breakers at the breaker panel lovely so much cleaner hell yeah all right you guys check in, in the next episode or hopefully we'll be installing this and get it all sorted if everything comes in the mail fast enough or we'll be doing some other silly stuff